they, they could work. You know, the space they use is done very well, but, you know, just by how much more money that this movie has and the backing of Disney, they're able to expand it huge and make it as beautifully ridiculous as possible. Now, once again, I say that there is no problem in reusing a plot or uh, using cliches. It's all about how you do it. Um, but I know some people might have complaints that uh, this movie seems too similar to the movie uh, Book of Life, which also used uh, the concepts and visual style revolving around uh, Day of the Dead. Uh, that, that movie was worked on by uh, Kennedy Tark uh, Tarkanovsky, who did um, Samurai Jack and uh, Powerpuff Girls, you know, one of the top animators uh, out there. Uh, as much as visual style, I do like this one more. But I love the character design and the movement uh, of each individual character more in that movie. Now, even though they have the same holiday, it does not mean that they are the same movie. Definitely not. And I think it's kind of like dangerous and misleading to just say that they are and that it is somehow a ripoff just because it came out. The concepts of this movie, I believe, actually started back when uh, uh, Toy Story 3 was coming out uh, and Disney wanted to uh, copyright the uh, the phrase Dia de, de los Muertos and you know, Mexican American community is like uh, fuck no, you're not doing that shit. Which, I totally agree with uh, the community that signed off against it. Um, because, you know, I, I love Disney, but I'll firmly admit that they have done some shady crap. Uh, this is one of them I do not agree with that, and I don't think they should even try to do it. I think it's a losing battle no matter how you do it. Uh, also, don't bully uh, any theaters or The Last Jedi saying that, you know, they can't get that much money. That's dirty too. Please, please, make me love you. Stop doing this much shady shit. But, once again, Disney love every day. Speaking of Disney love and Pixar love, Pixar needs to stop making grown men in theaters look like bitches because, you know, tears will just run down your face. I cried three times watching this movie. Uh, another thing that I like uh, that we used to get to see Frida Kahlo and, you know she is the most well known uh, Mexican painter that there is uh, you know and they kind of make fun of like some of her mindset you know she was I admit she was a weird woman <laughs> you know she was a bit crazy but you know we all love her work uh, and she is depicted as, you know, a skeleton woman as all the people that have passed on do. And they do a lot of fun things with that. Uh, we also see a uh, dead composer who looks a lot like Michael Giacchino. Uh, I thought that was a nice touch. Um, I really enjoy the uh, border control um, parallels that are in this movie. When, you know, the dead want to visit you know, the family members, but they can't because they don't have the right uh, certificates or photographs uh, that uh, is amazingly real, but also in this colorful cartoon context, which means that it's not overly preachy. Uh, and it's just enough to put it in the kids' minds and they'll look back and like, oh, it's not quite as much as, you know, a movie like um, uh, Zootopia, but that was a whole, like, plot of that movie. Um, I really love uh, the be beginning uh, exposition where it's uh, shown through paper. I thought that was a nice touch to do. Uh, now, some of the Pixar uh, movie catalog that you know, has some similarities, once again, no problem with that. I think it's pretty dope uh, that I, I can catch things like that. Um, you know, 
the main character that everyone around him doesn't like what he does and said he shouldn't and he looks up to this um, older mentor he watches on television uh, doing his thing and then he dies and then he wants to uh, have some kind of reconnection later you know it's very similar to the plot of Ratatouille uh, these movie movies both have that uh, it has some similarities uh, to up where now this is where I'm going to get into total spoilers uh, or now beginning of the movie we're, we're made to believe that Ernesto de la Cruz uh, the famous singer uh, that made millions back in the day uh, is the great grandfather of Miguel but we find out that Hector the character that we've been following and that's been helping Miguel actually is now, we couldn't tell because the photograph was ripped and all he had was the guitar to show information. Uh, so, he is the father of the um, uh, the great-great-grandmother who very likely has a form of dementia, uh, Coco. And if Coco is not reminded of her father's uh, existence, then he will have the second death and just disappear forever. But, you know, the problem is, you know, homeboy Miguel is stuck here, and uh, then he meets up with uh, De La Cruz, and they really hit it off. You know, he's like, oh, my, uh, Grandpappy, and, you know, they're having fun and all. It's all fun and games when we get the uh, continuity bomb that back in the day he poisoned uh you know his best friend Hector and Hector actually wrote all of you know his most famous songs that he performed and made millions off and it's also hinted that he may have taught him how to play the guitar at some point uh they left together as you know trying to build their own band together and for a brief time Hector did leave you know his daughter but he always promised he was going to come back and he wrote this song called remember me that's big part of the movie is the song remember me it's the most well-known song that was played by Ernesto all the time and you know it's all about the message of you know she remembers him and all that and you know that really tied in the last few minutes where she does remember and everything's brought together and uh, Ernesto gets fucked up for, you know, being a dick and murdering this man by poisoning, uh, a shot that he gave for him. Oh, I mean, shot, I mean, like this, and that, like, blah. Um, but yeah, movie is masterful. Uh, you know, you even, it even has some sim similarities to a movie like Spirit Away, where we go to the dead world and the character has to go through the arc to realize how to come back and earn some understand more respect for family uh, but you know never does it feel like it's preachy it's just like this is in line with the character this is in line with how it moves on uh, now I would like to go to now movie spectacular I give the movie an A but I would like to make a quick side rant um, before the movie actually started you know how a lot of uh, kids' movies, especially Pixar, will have like a uh, few minute uh, snippet of something else, uh, some kind of other project that they're like, let's see what people think about this. Uh, like, uh, I think it was for Inside Out, there was uh, two volcanoes that were in love. Uh, I remember one where it was like this Indian kid and his father, and that, that was very cool. It, it, you know, they always, it just. A fan film in itself and just trying to show off what pretty things they can do and just make a simple story. I didn't like that they shoved, you know, movie franchise uh, that they put in Frozen. And I, I've never been the biggest fan of Frozen. There are some scenes I really do like, but overall it's kind of overwhelming for me. I'm sorry. Underwhelming, sorry. Uh, and I'm just like, we're getting a story about where 
Mexicans are grieving over death. I'm like, you can't, you can't let, you can't let the, the, the Latin community have anything. You, you just gotta shove these lily white problem <laughs> <laughs> problems uh, in our face. Uh, I, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Um, if you're wondering, yes, uh, I did get injury. I accidentally uh, bonked myself on the head with my door. Don't ask. Uh, but I really do love this movie, and uh, it's highly enjoyable. Uh, and I just want to give a shout out to everybody that was in it. And it's also cool to have such a great presence of, you know, Latin representation, you know, Mexican-American uh, representation and having Mexican-American actors, you know, portray them and really connect with the culture and ex express it to, you know, a whole new generation that's always amazing and it's beautiful and the Mexican community has been very attached to uh, the concepts of family and, you know, love. So, y como parte de Cuton Critics sabe, sabe que te quiero.